Well, it looks like I get to give you one of those rare good news versions of this segment. And part of that is because of the diligent work of feminist activists all over the country. And some of it is because the bar is so goddamn low that, hey, look, we get to keep one of our rights qualifies as good news these days. So the right in question is the right to medical abortion, which was called into question by a recent lawsuit out of Texas. You'll remember this one. It's where the activist judge, whose only real qualifications for the bench was really hating abortion, ruled that he knew more about mifepristone than the FDA and all their stupid doctors and researchers and tried to ban its use nationally. The Supreme Court stepped in then and issued a temporary order that allowed it to remain available. Though Clarence Thomas and Sam Alito made it clear that they'd have let the lunatic activist judge have his way. Well, the court heard oral arguments about the case on Tuesday. And while we're going to have to wait a bit to hear their decision, every indication is that even the conservative wing of the court is skeptical of this. Possibly because the argument is that mifepristone is too dangerous, even though it's 10 times safer than Viagra, which can be obtained by mail by collecting enough fucking cereal box tops at this point. But of course, bad arguments have never been enough to dissuade this court. And it's the first major challenge to abortion rights that the Supreme Court has heard since overturning Roe. So needless to say, I was holding my breath a bit over this one. And I still am, though the outlook is a lot better Wednesday than it was on Monday. Incidentally, if you're concerned about this issue and you're going to be at the American Atheist Annual Convention this weekend in Philly, I strongly urge you to check out friend of the show Devin Graham's workshop on Friday about self-managed abortion. And before I let you go, I have another piece of holy shit, how is this good news, good news for you? This time out of the unlikely state of West Virginia. Though, to be fair, as much as you don't expect good feminism news out of West Virginia, this is exactly the type of good feminism news you'd expect out of there if you did. Because for the first time, it is now illegal in West Virginia to sexually assault somebody, even if she's your wife. So, yeah, back in 1976, West Virginia repealed the state's marital exemption for rape, in case you needed a reminder just how recent this whole concept of women's having rights really is. But West Virginia didn't want to be too progressive when it came to banning rape, so they just banned sexual assault, not sexual abuse. That is, the marital exemption remained in place in cases of non-consensual sexual touching. And it's worth noting here, not that this isn't already egregious, That includes spouses who are separated. Or rather, it did include spouses who are separated. Because last week, West Virginia's governor signed Senate Bill 190 into law and removed all remaining marital exemptions. And if your reaction to this is a horrified, they're just getting around to that now, just imagine how the advocates that have been working towards this law removal for over a decade feel. So yeah, tentative, overdue good news that shouldn't have to exist this week which is as good as you're going to get out of me. So I'll wrap it up there and hand things back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli. 